behalf of the multi-faith groups that are standing behind me and will speak today, I want to start by welcoming all of you to our press conference to express strong opposition to the planned inclusion of the Ram Temple float, an anti-Muslim hate symbol, in the upcoming India Day Parade this Sunday, August 18th. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to give a huge shout out to Mayor Eric Adams, who yesterday condemned this float and unequivocally stood against Islamophobia. Yes. Yay. We applaud your courage, Mayor, for saying this. Now we urge you to do the right thing and remove this float from the India Day Parade yes. this upcoming Sunday. Without doubt, this float aims to propagate hate and instill fear among Americans by showcasing a temple that is a symbol of violence, historical injustice, and religious intolerance. Think about it, this is happening in New York City. For it to happen anywhere in the United States is appalling, but for it to happen in New York City, the Big Apple, the melting pot, amplifies this sentiment. This parade claims to celebrate India's rich history of diversity and coexistence, but far-right groups in New York are hijacking what should be a beautiful celebration by infusing their annual India Day Parade with imagery of the Ram Temple, a symbol of anti-minority violence and historical injustice. The Ram Temple stands on the ruins of the Babri Mosque, destroyed on December 6, 1992, by over 150,000 Hindu militants who claim that the mosque was built over a historic Ram Temple, but there is no evidence for this. In fact, in 2019, the Supreme Court acknowledged that the demolition was illegal and there was no proof of it, but still, in 2024, we saw that the Ram Mandir was opened in, uh, in Ayodhya on the side of that. So this is obviously a very troubling thing for it to happen in New York City, like I said, appalling. We are putting pressure on our elected officials. We are putting pressure to ensure that this float will get canceled. And we thank all of our, our partners here for pushing for support. And um, I would like to call up um, Eklan Singh from Dalit Solidarity Forum to speak a little bit more on this. I feel very honored and privileged to be here with everyone today. My name is Eklan Singh, a member of Dalit Solidarity Forum in the USA and a very proud first-generation Indian-American Dalit living in New York City. Dalits are those formerly known as untouchables in the country of India. And me, as a young aspiring actor in the world's best democratic country, my hope for the beautiful land of promise and what it offers to members of the young generation like me is shattered by the news of the exhibitionism of a Hindu nationalist religious supremacy in this year of 2024 under the guise of the NYC India Day Parade. It is in fact a showcasing of Hindu supremacy. Our United States of America must celebrate global unity, not displaying hatred. Why is the United States' reputation of freedom, liberty, and justice for all being destroyed by displaying the Ram Temple float, a symbol of crushing Muslim sanctity? This display is created by Hindutva, which is a hundred-year-old far-right ideology of fascism. Their activities include vigilante violence, lynching, targeting India's religious minorities, and oppressed caste groups, spreading hatred for Muslims, Christians, and Dalits based on notions of racial and blood purity. And they seek to reinforce these concepts by preventing inter-caste and interfaith marriages, especially between Hindus and Muslims. Hindu supremacist organizations were first established in the United States 50 years ago, parading as cultural organizations and interfaith leaders. The Dulles Solidarity Forum has a mission, which includes condemning such acts of public displays of hatred against Muslims, especially in the form of a float in the streets of New York City. It's as if we are mocking the Statue of Liberty, which is a symbol of the United States and New York City, where we live with global communities from all over the world. We need to feel safe and not paraded as demons. Indian migration to the United States has become increasingly diverse across class, caste, and religion, as is evident in the growing presence of Muslim, Sikhs, Christians, and Dalits. I call for New York to not let us down and to not betray our trust in you and to keep us all safe with dignity and respect. Jai Beam. Thank you so much, Eklan. Um, I, before our other speakers, I wanted to recognize 
uh, some of the offices that have helped us put this together and they're here today. Uh, representatives are here today. Uh, Lee Zhu from the Comptroller Brad Lander's office uh, is the Senior constitu Constituencies Liaison for AAPI Communities. And Alex Liao, the Senior Advisor and Deputy Chief of uh, Council Member Shahana, office, uh, Shahana Hanif's office is also here as well. Um, part of the mayor making a statement yesterday is uh, effort by multiple groups and also a collaboration between three council members, Shekhar Krishnan, Shahana Hanif, and Zahran Mamdani. I have the text of the letter here that they sent to the mayor and I would like to read that for all of you. <clears throat> Dear Mayor Adams, we are writing to request your urgent action to prevent the display, public display of a divisive controversial float at the upcoming India Day Parade on August 18th. In their public promotional materials, parade organizers have advertised a float with a replica of the Ram Temple in Ayodhya, India. A fuller explanation of the context here is required. Inaugurated in 2024, the Hindu temple was built atop the ruins of a mosque, which according to India's own Supreme Court, was unlawfully and violently demolished in 1992. The destruction led to riots across the country and over 2,000 deaths. The history behind the temple's construction has made it extremely controversial and for many is representative of bigotry against the Muslim minority in India. In 2002, a similar display celebrating the temple's construction during the India Day Parade in nearby Edison, New Jersey, drew wide condemnation as an expression of anti-Muslim hate, including from both the United States' U.S. Senators, both of the New Jersey's U.S. Senators. Here in New York, home to thriving South Asian communities across many religions, our diversity is our strength. As proud Indian American and Bangladeshi Americans, Hindu and Muslim elected officials representing New York communities, we welcome the celebration of Indian culture and heritage on the streets of our great city. However, such public celebrations should not include symbols of divisiveness or bigotry. A float celebrating the construction of the Ram Temple would be divisive and runs counter to the values of New York City. Given your authority over the insurance of permits, we ask that you take action to prevent this float's inclusion in the upcoming India Day Parade. So once again, we want to thank uh, council members Shekhar Krishnan, Shahana Hanif, and Zahran Mamdani for putting pressure on the mayor and bringing more awareness to this issue. And with that, I would like to call up David Kalal, Communications Director from Hindus for Human Rights. Hi. Uh, good morning. Thank you all for coming here today. My name is David Dashrat Kalal. I'm the Director of Communications for Hindus for Human Rights, an organization founded in 2019 to mobilize progressive Hindus and their allies and to provide a Hindu voice of resistance to caste, to Islamophobia, and to Hindu supremacy. As we stand here today on the threshold of New York City's 42nd annual India Day Parade, it is imperative that we revisit and foreground the values of decolonization and secularism that fuel the Indian independence movement. Unfortunately, the Indian Consulate of New York, in collaboration with the Vishwa Hindu Parishad of America, or the VHPA, has chosen a different path. They plan to feature a recreation of Ayodhya's Ram Mandir as the centerpiece float in this year's parade. Let us be clear. This mandir, a temple erected over the ruins of the Babri Masjid, a centuries-old mosque destroyed by Hindu extremists in 1992, has long been weaponized as a symbol of power by global forces of Hindu nationalism. It is a symbol that should not and cannot be conflated with Indian identity. The VHPA, the American wing of the Vishwa Hindu Parishad, is an organization with deep ties to Hindu supremacism. The VHB has been directly implicated in numerous cases of deadly violence against Indian minorities. Together, these organizations form part of a transnational network whose explicit goal is to extend right-wing, Brahminical vision of Hinduism, one that relies on the subjugation of religious minorities, Dalits, Adivasis, and other mar marginalized groups. Hindu nationalism, or Hindutva, is not a benign cultural movement. It is a political project designed to legitimize a vision of India that is fundamentally at odds with the Indian constitution and the principles of pluralistic democracy. The inclusion of the Ram Mandir float in this year's parade is not a celebration of cultural pride, but a glorification of both a violent history and a violent ambition. It is a display that should be condemned by all who value justice and human dignity. 
This is a disturbing trend, one that concerns not only New Yorkers, but all Americans. The Hindu supremacist movement in the United States, represented by groups like the VHPA, is increasingly converging with other segments of the American far right. Given the growing political activity and influence of Indian Americans, the debate within our communities have broader implications for American society as a whole. As members of the diaspora, and particularly as progressive Hindus, we have a responsibility. We must use our platform to advocate for a vision of India that is inclusive, tolerant, and reflective of the diversity that defines both India and the United States. The VHPA and similar organizations do not speak for all Hindus, nor do they speak for all Indian Americans. The vast majority of us, regardless of faith, seek peaceful and respectful relationships between communities. We reject the extremist views of those who would divide us, and instead we embrace a vision of both India and the Indian American community that honors the bonds of friendship and family that have long united our diverse communities. The political landscape in India is shifting with the current regime facing increased opposition. Indian Americans have a unique opportunity to support the growing resistance to hate and division. By standing against the hateful displays planned for this year's parade, we can offer an alternate vision. To this end, Hindus for Human Rights demands the removal of the Ram Mandir float from the 2024 India Day Parade. We stand firmly against symbols of hate and division. The India Day Parade should be a celebration of the richness and diversity that defines our community, not a platform for a message that excludes and marginalizes. We urge our elected officials and community leaders to join us in condemning this brazen display of far-right nationalism. Let us reclaim the spirit of the India Day Parade, one that honors our shared heritage, embraces our diversity, and stands as a beacon of unity. Let us march together, not in the shadows of division, but in the light of hope, inclusivity, and mutual respect. Thank you. Thank you, David. And before calling up our next speaker, I just wanted to issue a correction to what I said earlier. My apologies. It's Assemblyman Zohar Mamadani, not council member. Our next speaker will be Afshan Khwaja from the Council on American Relations, uh, Relations in New York. She is the board president. Asalaamu As Alaikum, everyone. Greetings of peace. My name is Afsha Khwaja, and I'm here representing the Council on American Islamic Relations New York chapter, also known as CARE New York. CARE New York is a Muslim civil rights group that has worked for more than 25 years to defend the Constitution. We are the leading advocates for promoting justice and mutual understanding for American Muslims within the state of New York. CARE New York condemns in the strongest possible terms the presence of an anti-Muslim float at the upcoming 2024 India Day Parade. The proposed float for the parade is a blatant attempt to glorify the illegal demolition of the historical Babri Masjid and celebrate the ongoing violence and terror against 200 million Indian Muslims. The float is literally a display of hate parading down the streets of New York City. It represents and sends a message to the American Muslims from India, such as myself, that religious tolerance and violence that this float symbolizes can even reach our local society. Such displays of bigotry and intolerance have no place in our communities or our celebrations. They undermine the values of unity and respect that are foundational to our society. It is imperative that we stand together against hate in all its forms and work towards fostering an inclusive environment for everyone, regardless of their religion or background. And, and everyone is treated with dignity and respect. As New Yorkers, as CARE New Yorkers, we reject hate, we reject the violence that comes from hate, we reject all symbols of hate, and we reject any attempt to intimidate or potentially threaten the safety of Muslims living in New York. Yes. Let us reaffirm our commitment to tolerance, mutual respect, and celebration of our shared humanity by not allowing any displays of hate in any capacity. Thank you. Thank you, Afshan, for those comments. Um, next, I'd like to call up Reverend Peter Cook, the Executive Director of the New York State Council of Churches. Greetings. My name is the Reverend Peter Cook. I'm executive director of the New York State Council of Churches. The council was founded in 1893, represents nine 
denominations and over 7,500 Christian congregations across the state of New York. As a council, we've always been one to stand up for the poor and the disenfranchised in our state, and we are especially concerned about the ability of people, regardless of their faith, to have the freedom to speak and practice their faith without worry of being intimidated or harassed by any religious majority. We are strong proponents of the separation of church and state as Christians because we know as Christians how bad it is for democracy and freedom when a narrow form of Christianity is adopted by the state to discriminate against people of other faiths or even against other Christians. Governments, in our view, always make very bad theologians. Given our commitment to a secular state, in America, which cherishes religious freedom, we also celebrate India Independence Day. And we celebrate that day because India has always been conceived of as a secular state with a secular constitution, which allows for the freedom of expression of people of all faiths. In this spirit, we are in solidarity with our Muslim friends and with our Christian friends who have also experienced much violence in, uh, in India, like having their churches burned down, having their pastors beaten up, being thrown in jail for bogus conversion laws. We really sympathize with our Muslim friends. And we are in solidarity with them to object to a float which celebrates the construction of a massive Hindu temple on top of a destroyed Muslim temple. We know what it's like to have our places of worship destroyed in India. We condemn this destruction of the Muslim temple and the celebration of this Hindu temple because it aims to intimidate and diminish our Indian Muslim friends. This float is a monument to an Indian government which seeks to defy India's secular constitution and turn it into a Hindu nationalist state where if you are not Hindu, you have few rights and can even be denied citizenship. How you can have a float like this on a day celebrating Indian independence is really beyond us. So we call on the parade organizers in the spirit of Indian democracy to pull this float. And we also have a message to our politicians. First of all, we really want to thank Mayor Adams for speaking out against this float. Thank you, Mayor Adams. Um, in the same way, um, other politicians should not be confusing the practice of Christianity with the quest for a Christian state by the far, far right. If they embrace that principle, they should not confuse Hindutva, which is a political movement, with the authentic practice of Hinduism. They are not the same and you are not being Hindophobic to object. Yes, you as politicians are here to not favor one religion over another, but to defend our democracy and freedom of religious expression. So once again, will you, our elected officials, join us in saying no to hate and calling for this float to be removed from this parade and saying yes to religious freedom and human rights. Thank you. Thank you so much, Peter.
those were profound words. Those were very powerful and uniting words. <clears throat> um, as all of uh, our partners have spoken so far, they've said beautiful words, but we want to reiterate that this movement, this fight is against the Islamophobic float. This is not against the parade. We want to see this parade. We want to celebrate the secular values of India. We want Muslims and Christians and Sikhs and Dalits to also feel like this is their parade. So the, the message is about condemning a float that is divisive, not the parade in itself. And with that being said, I would like to invite Neil Christie, the Executive Director of the Federation of Indian American Christian Organs of Nor Organizations of North America. And Neil, like myself, is, uh, has roots in Gujarat, That's India. Right. Good morning, friends. Thank you for being here. And uh, I greet you on behalf of FIACONA, the Federation of Indian American Christian Organizations of North America, representing one million diverse Christians, all different religious traditions, coming from the subcontinent, coming from India. Today, uh, August 15th, tens of thousands of people worldwide will take part in Indian De uh, Independence Day events, small and large, from parades to community gatherings to family functions. They gather together in a diverse celebration of who we are as a people, much like those that that gather together in the adopted countries where they now live. Today in New York, we remember the pluralistic, secular Indian constitution that it was written by a Dalit caste scholar. Its first education minister was an Islamic cleric, that Christians and Sikhs and Jains were part of the independence movement rejecting colonialism. Well before the U.S. became a country of immigrants, India grew from the contributions over the centuries of religious minorities, Parsis, Christians, Hindus, Sikhs, Jains, Muslims, all of them contributed to a whole. But today, today, Hindu supremacism, a device ideology that goes by the name of Hindutva, that calls for the subjugation of minority faiths, lower castes, people deemed inferior because of their race, their skin tone, aim to transform India into a purely Hindu nation to secure U.S. support for this transformation. Well, the Federation of Indian American Christian Organizations of North America is profoundly, profoundly alarmed by the inclusion of the anti-Muslim folk in the India Day Parade scheduled for this coming Sunday. This float organized by the VHPA in collaboration with the Office of the Indian Consulate, something that we should truly be ashamed of, friends, truly be ashamed of, starkly is in contrast with the intended values of inclusivity, respect, that New York City is known for and aspires to, that the Indian Constitution seeks to embody. Inordinate government funding went into the infrastructure in the inauguration of the massive Ram Temple in January of 2024, leading to widespread violence instigated by triumphant Hindu mobs, as reported by the Washington Post. In August 2022, Hindu supremacist groups similarly provo provoked the India Day Parade in Edison, New Jersey, into a hate event by displaying a bulldozer symbolizing the demolition of Muslim homes, Christian churches in India, alongside images of Prime Minister Modi, and other Hindu supremacist leaders. This incident was condemned by both U.S. Senators Cory Booker and Bob Menendez. In India, we need to remember that the government established National Council of Education Research. The training published new textbooks in 2023 that removed references to Muslims, friends, including the 2002 riots in Gujarat, my home state, that resulted in countless deaths and murders. As Christians, we have seen firsthand the violent scapegoating, the targeting, convenient targeting and terrorizing of thousands of people in their churches, their mosques, their schools, their community-based social outreach ministries. These ministries that meet people's vital needs in India and in the U.S. by organizations associated with the VHP, the BAPS, and other far-right groups. These entities continue to function with impunity, even with, in, with international condemnation, 
they continue. They continue. So today, Fiacona reminds the parade's organizers that the Human Rights Watch has warned that the Indian government has not only failed to protect Muslims and other minorities from attack, but have now adopted laws that systematically discriminate against Muslims and stigmatize any critic of the regime. And as Christians, we are, in, we are particularly, particularly interested in speaking across our denominations and saying that this struggle for Muslims must be also our struggle. As Christians, we have a profound responsibility to speak prophetically, truthfully, to power, having witnessed countless generations of burnings, bombings of churches by white supremacists, where black bodies and brown bodies have been sacrificed at the whims of weaponized religion in the form of Christian nationalism. And so we know what it's like. We know what it's like to fight, with it, fight against this kind of a power. And as Christians, we stand with indigenous peoples, native peoples, whose sacred sites have been repeatedly desecrated, appropriated in attempts to erase their spiritual traditions in the name of religious superiority. And we see this float doing something very, very similar. It is no longer, it is not simply not a, a simple, a, a symbol of, of, uh, of anything but hate. We, we cannot see it in any way other than it's a symbol of hate. And we see these as examples of violence in the U.S. acted out in the devastation, the devastation still that people experience with the Babri Mosque and the arrogance in erecting the Ram Temple. Sophia Kona and all Christians of good conscience cannot be complicit with our silence. Symbols of hate can never be disguised as symbols of celebration. On India Independence Day, we are called to come together for inclusivity, not just tolerance, respect, inclusivity, equity. And that is what we are calling all Christians to do side by side with our Muslim siblings today. Thank you. Thank you, Neil, and thank you, Peter, um, for being our Christian partners, standing up to this. As you know, the struggle for religious minorities in India is not limited to just Muslims, like, like you both said. Um, next, I'd like to call up Shivani Parikh, a board member from Sadhana. I was born in New York City, but my parents are also from Gujarat, India. When I think about what it means to live in the hyphen, uh, but to also celebrate being from India, I reflect on the craftsmanship of the scars I have from the Kutch region of Gujarat, the pride I take in the brave resistance of the freedom fighters who liberated India from British rule how rotli, dar, bhat, rice, and sabji calms my soul. Then of course is knowing too that my faith in Bhagwan, God, is born out of being Hindu, the world's fourth largest religion. Being Hindu is rooted in an understanding of a oneness of humanity, a dedication to ahimsa or nonviolence, and a conscientious respect for all faiths because they are all roads to our shared God. In speaking for sadhana today, I want to first challenge the conflation of being of Indian heritage to be intertwined with Hinduism. When the Indian constitution commits to an interfaith nation and thus an interfaith diaspora, India's diversity and inclusion is its beauty and strength that it has been shaped by peoples, leaders and histories from many beliefs that all together enrich her. Second, I want to challenge the float that is elevating and celebrating the Ram Temple in Ayodhya being built on top of the Babri Masjid as a quote-unquote victory. There is no victory to be taken from a religious supremacist attitude that should have never happened in the world's largest ostensible democracy. And finally, I want to share that though I was born an only child, that I tend to tell people these days that I do have one brother and he is both Indian and Muslim. One long-standing Hindu tradition is that of Raksha Bandhan, or tying a string as a sign of reciprocal protection between sisters and brothers. There is a storied history of chosen family across our faiths, whether looking to Emperor Humayun accepting Rani Karnavati's Rakhi and plea for military aid, or the famed sing singer Lata Mangeshkar celebrating Raksha Bandhan with Bollywood actor Dilip Kumar, whose birth name is actually Muhammad Yusuf Khan, and who she calls Yusuf Bhai. I have told my chosen brother that I recognize him from a past life, even though in following Islam, he doesn't technically believe in reincarnation. And this is all connected when we consider the moral courage and responsibility of that Indian Hindus of conscience 
and a commitment to equality and justice must have, especially in how we represent our diaspora in New York City and beyond. It is easy and right for me to stand with other faith leaders today and, to, and, and an honor to represent Sadhana. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shivani, for sharing that beautiful personal story of solidarity and inclusivity. That's a very beautiful story. Next, we will have Dr. Zainab Tanvir, the New York Chapter Co-Director for Muslims for Progressive Values. First of all, thank you to the organizers for inviting Muslims for Progressive Values to come out and say a few words. And thank you to everyone else for participating. In recent months, we have all bared witness to the rise in Islamophobia across our communities, fueled by the ongoing genocide in Gaza and the increasing normalization of the toxic combination of anti-immigrant and anti-Muslim sentiments. These sentiments do not manifest in a singular way, but instead appear at all levels of our society. From individual crimes like the murder of six-year-old Wadea here in the U.S. to the violent outbreak of anti-Muslim riots across the U.K. happening right now. This climate of hate not only threatens the safety and dignity of Muslim communities, but threatens the whole world. The inclusion of a float celebrating the Ram Mandir at this year's India Day Parade in New York City is yet another manifestation of the rising contempt towards the Muslim community. This float, inaccurately displayed as a cultural symbol, in actuality represents the destruction of a centuries-old mosque which led to the loss of thousands of Muslim and Hindu lives in the communal riots that followed. The Ram Mandir is part of a larger right-wing project to erase Muslims from the rich and diverse society of India. It is a reminder of the violence that continues to be inflicted on Muslim communities both in India and globally. As Muslims for Progressive Values New York chapter, we stand in solidarity with all those who are oppressed and marginalized. We are here today to protest this float, which represents an ideology of division ex and exclusion, which has no place in our diverse and pluralistic society. In addition to acknowledging our responsibility as Muslims to call out hateful actions, we also believe it is crucial to hold politicians and others in positions of power accountable for their contribution and tolerance to the spread of misinformation and hateful ideologies. We call on all New Yorkers to join us in rejecting Islamophobia in all its forms and stand up for the values of inclusion, peace, and justice. Values that have the power to unite us all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Zainab. Next, we will have Harmit Kaur Kamboj, Senior State Policy Manager for the Sikh Coalition. Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh. My name is Harmeet Gaur, and, the, and I'm the Senior State Policy Manager at the Sikh Coalition, the largest Sikh civil rights organization in the country. I'm honored to join you all this morning to condemn the troubling inclusion of a float celebrating the Ram Mandir in Ayodhya in this year's India Day Parade, taking place here in Manhattan. The celebration of the Mandir in this context is a direct affront to Indian American Muslims in New York whose families have historically and continue to be persecuted in India for the simple fact of their faith. Moreover, the parade organizers' unapologetic choice to publicize the Ram Mandir float in parade promotions reflects the growing normalization of Hindu nationalism in India and in the Indian diaspora. The Sikh community are no strangers to the violent ideology and its increasing hold on the minds and hearts of South Asians around the world. The government of India and its Prime Minister Narendra Modi have been vocal champions of Hindutva for years, inciting violence against the non-Hindu religious minorities of India, including against Muslims, Christians, Dalits, Adivasis, Sikhs, and many others for decades. In the past year, that bigotry has emerged on the international stage with the government of India's ties to the assassination of Canadian Sikh activist Hardeep Singh Nijjar and its verified attempts to coordinate similar murders of Sikhs here in the United States. 
a Department of Justice indictment that was unsealed late last year revealed that an agent of the Indian government unsuccessfully attempted to coordinate such an assassination here in New York City, bringing the raw violence of Hindutva to our very doorstep. As the Sikh community marks the 40th anniversary of India's genocide against Sikhs in 1984 and see the connections between that violence and continued repression and violent behavior today, the Sikh coalition stands in stern solidarity with Muslims and other religious minorities in India and in the diaspora who seek only to practice their faiths freely without the threat of harm or backlash. We call on Mayor Adams to show up for his diverse Indian American constituency by preventing the Ram Mandir floats inclusion in this year's India Day Parade, making clear that violent nationalist ideologies have no place in this city. Vaheguruji ka khalsa, Vaheguruji ki fateh. Thank you, Harmeet. Uh, along with all of our partners today, we do have a group that could not be here today, but we did want to read their statement. The statement is from Walter Ruby, the president of Jews and Muslims and Allies Acting Together. Jews, Jews and Muslims and Allies Acting Together, Jamaat, is a grassroots organization of Muslims, Jews, and allies in the Washington, D.C. area and around the U.S. Jamaat is committed to strengthening Muslim-Jewish relations in the U.S. and around the world and to stand up for both Muslim and Jewish communities or any other community that is victimized by violence, incitement, or bigotry. Jamaat has long been concerned about the rise of the ideology of Hindutva or Hindu supremacy in India, together with a sharp rise of demonization against Islam and violence attack against Indian Muslims. Therefore, we strongly denounce the decision by a group of far-right pro-Hindutva organizations with the support of the Indian Consulate in New York City to feature in New York City's upcoming India Day Parade, a replica of the controversial and divisive Ram Hindu Temple in India that was inaugurated this January and built on the ruins of the 16th century Babri Mosque, demolished by anti-Muslim mobs 34 years ago. As noted, this float aims to instill fear among Muslims living in New York and beyond by showcasing a temple that is a symbol of violence, historical injustice, and religious intolerance. And to close, I just wanted to echo the sentiments of everyone behind me who has spoke. I wanted to highlight what Harmeet said there was an assassination attempt on a Sikh leader here in New York. And to, if you can really look into that and understand that the Indian government is trying to take matters into their own hands in the United States, that's baffling. The United States has its own issues. India has its own issues. But to think that another government could try to cause problems here in America and succeed is very troubling. So we urge people to continue standing together. That is the, the key. Unity is the key. Let's stand together. Let's stay strong. Uh, we've already made so much progress in getting the mayor to comment on this. Sunday is only a couple of days away, but with your support, with everyone's support here, the float, we, we are confident that the float will get pulled and the city will do the right thing. Um, and with that, I do want to call up our advocacy, Ajit, uh, advocacy director, Ajit Sahi, for a couple of words. Thank you, Isna. Thank you for everybody for being here and for your powerful words here and testimonies. I just want to say one thing. I am a Hindu and I oppose Hindu bigotry, Hindu nationalism, Hindu extremism. Just as there are Muslims who oppose Islamic extremism, just as there are Christians who oppose Christian nationalism, I am a Hindu who opposes Hindu nationalism and I believe that the arc of the moral universe is already bending towards justice. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, and now, last but not least, we have Hawk Newsom, the co-founder of Black Lives Matter of Greater New York. People, black people, people of color in this city are tired of being disrespected by this city. We saw our Juneteenth celebration shut down by the mayor's office. We saw the NYPD used as a weapon to dismantle the Dominican parade in the Bronx. And here we go again. The best part about it is we're acting preemptively to protect our Muslim brothers and sisters from being humiliated and re-traumatized in a New York City parade. 
I don't understand how such things can be tolerated. Our Muslim brothers and sisters are being persecuted across the world. If anything, they should be centered and listened to now more than anyone else on these particular issues. So where do we stand? What's Mayor Eric Adams gonna do? Is he gonna honor his brothers and sisters or is he gonna turn his back to them? To be more specific, a lot of evil in the world is coming from the right. Those who stand on justice, those who stand on God's word, no matter who you praise, you are against evil. Your doctrine tells you to stand for justice. So where is New York City and the mayor going to stand on this? Are he going to, is he going to, where is Mayor Eric Adams on this? Is he going to hold the hands of our Muslim brothers and sisters? Or is he going to slap them in their face with disrespect? Thank you.